the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 66 From the Book of Leviticus The Sabbatical Year The Lord said to Moses on Mount Sinai, Say to the people of Israel, When you come into the land which I give you, the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard, and gather in its fruits, but in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord, you shall not sow your field or prune your vineyard. What grows of itself in your harvest you shall not reap, and the grapes of your undressed vine you shall not gather, it shall be a year of solemn rest for the land. The Sabbath of the land shall provide food for you, for yourself and for your male and female slaves and for your hired servant and the sojourner who lives with you, for your cattle also and for the beasts that are in your land all its yield shall be for food. The Year of Jubilee And you shall count seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the time of the seven weeks of years shall be to you forty-nine years. Then you shall send abroad the loud trumpet on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement you shall send abroad the trumpet throughout all your land. And you shall hallow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants, it shall be a jubilee for you, when each of you shall return to his property and each of you shall return to his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be to you, in it you shall neither sow, nor reap what grows of itself, nor gather the grapes from the undressed vines. For it is a jubilee, it shall be holy to you you shall eat what it yields out of the field. In this year of Jubilee each of you shall return to his property. And if you sell to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor, you shall not wrong one another. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, you shall buy from your neighbor, and according to the number of years for crops he shall sell to you. If the years are many you shall increase the price, and if the years are few you shall diminish the price, for it is the number of the crops that he is selling to you. You shall not wrong one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. Therefore you shall do my statutes, and keep my ordinances and perform them, so you will dwell in the land securely. The land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill, and dwell in it securely. And if you say, What shall we eat in the seventh year, if we may not sow or gather in our crop? I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, so that it will bring forth fruit for three years. When you sow in the eighth year, you will be eating old produce, until the ninth year, when its produce comes in, you shall eat the old. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the country you possess, you shall grant a redemption of the land. If your brother becomes poor, and sells part of his property, then his next of kin shall come and redeem what his brother has sold. If a man has no one to redeem it, and then himself becomes prosperous and finds sufficient means to redeem it, let him reckon the year since he sold it and pay back the overpayment to the man to whom he sold it, and he shall return to his property. But if he has not sufficient means to get it back for himself, then what he sold shall remain in the hand of him who bought it until the year of Jubilee, in the Jubilee it shall be released, and he shall return to his property. If a man sells a dwelling house in a walled city, he may redeem it within a whole year after its sale, for a full year he shall have the right of redemption. If it is not redeemed within a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be made sure in perpetuity to him who bought it, throughout his generations, it shall not be released in the jubilee. But the houses of the villages which have no wall around them shall be reckoned with the fields of the country, they may be redeemed, and they shall be released in the jubilee. Nevertheless the cities of the Levites, the houses in the cities of their possession, the Levites may redeem at any time. And if one of the Levites does not exercise his right of redemption, then the house that was sold in a city of their possession shall be released in the jubilee for the houses in the cities of the Levites are their possession among the people of Israel. But the fields of common land belonging to their cities may not be sold, for that is their perpetual possession. And if your brother becomes poor, and cannot maintain himself with you, you shall maintain him, as a stranger and a sojourner he shall live with you. Take no interest from him or increase, but fear your God, that your brother may live beside you. You shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan, and to be your God. And if your brother becomes poor beside you, and sells himself to you, you shall not make him serve as a slave, he shall be with you as a hired servant and as a sojourner. He shall serve with you until the year of the Jubilee, 
then he shall go out from you, he and his children with him, and go back to his own family, and return to the possession of his fathers. For they are my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, they shall not be sold as slaves. You shall not rule over him with harshness, but shall fear your God. As for your male and female slaves whom you may have, you may buy male and female slaves from among the nations that are round about you. You may also buy from among the strangers who sojourn with you and their families that are with you, who have been born in your land, and they may be your property. You may bequeath them to your sons after you, to inherit as a possession forever, you may make slaves of them, but over your brethren the people of Israel you shall not rule, one over another, with harshness. If a stranger or sojourner with you becomes rich, and your brother beside him becomes poor and sells himself to the stranger or sojourner with you, or to a member of the stranger's family, then after he is sold he may be redeemed, one of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle, or his cousin may redeem him, or a near kinsman belonging to his family may redeem him, or if he grows rich he may redeem himself. He shall reckon with him who bought him from the year when he sold himself to him until the year of jubilee, and the price of his release shall be according to the number of years, the time he was with his owner shall be rated as the time of a hired servant. If there are still many years, according to them he shall refund out of the price paid for him the price for his redemption. If there remain but a few years until the year of jubilee, he shall make a reckoning with him, according to the years of service due from him he shall refund the money for his redemption. As a servant hired year by year shall he be with him, he shall not rule with harshness over him in your sight. And if he is not redeemed by these means, then he shall be released in the year of jubilee, he and his children with him. For to me the people of Israel are servants, they are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. From the Book of Psalms Praise and Thanksgiving To the Choirmaster A Psalm of David A Song Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord, exult before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows, is God in His holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to dwell in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O oh God, when Thou didst go forth before Thy people, when Thou didst march through the wilderness, Selah, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain, at the presence of God. Yon Sinai quaked at the presence of God the God of Israel. Reign in abundance, O God, Thou didst shed abroad. Thou didst restore Thy heritage as it languished. Thy flock found a dwelling in it. In Thy goodness, O God, Thou didst provide for the needy. The Lord gives the command. Great is the host of those who bore the tidings. The kings of the armies, they flee, they flee. The women at home divide the spoil. Though they stay among the sheepfolds, the wings of a dove covered with silver, its pinions with green gold. When the Almighty scattered kings there, snow fell on Zaman. O mighty mountain, mountain of Bashan! O many peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan! Why look you with envy, O many peaked mountain, at the mount which God desired for his abode? Yea, where the Lord will dwell for ever. With mighty chariotry, twice ten thousand, thousands upon thousands. The Lord came from Sinai into the holy place. Thou didst ascend the high mount, leading captives in thy train, and receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious, that the Lord God may dwell there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Selah. Our God is a God of salvation. And to God, the Lord, belongs escape from death. But God will shatter the heads of his enemies the hairy crown of him who walks in his guilty ways. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea. That you may bathe your feet in blood. That the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from the foe. Thy solemn processions are seen, O God. 
the processions of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers in front, the minstrels last. Between the maidens playing timbrels. Bless God in the great congregation. The Lord, O you who are of Israel's fountain. There is Benjamin, the least of them, in the lead. The princes of Judah in their throng. The princes of Zebulun, the princes of Naphtali. Summon thy might, O God. Show thy strength, O God, thou who hast wrought for us. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem, kings bear gifts to thee. Rebuke the beasts that dwell among the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the peoples. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Let bronze be brought from Egypt. Let Ethiopia hasten to stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord, Selah, to him who rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. Lo, he sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and his power is in the skies. Terrible is God in his sanctuary. The God of Israel, he gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. From the Acts of the Apostles When Moses saw it he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to look, the voice of the Lord came, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And Moses trembled and he did not dare to look. And the Lord said to him, Take off the shoes from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the ill-treatment of my people that are in Egypt and heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? God sent us both ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel that appeared to him in the bush. He led them out, having performed wonders and signs in Egypt and at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for forty years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet from your brethren as he raised me up. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, and he received living oracles to give to us. Our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside, and in their hearts they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make for us gods to go before us, as for this Moses who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered a sacrifice to the idol and rejoiced in the works of their hands. But God turned and gave them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer to me slain beasts and sacrifices? Forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? And you took up the tent of Moloch, and the star of the god Rephan, the figures which you made to worship. And I will remove you beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tent of witness in the wilderness, even as he who spoke to Moses directed him to make it, according to the pattern that he had seen. Our fathers in turn brought it in with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations which God thrust out before our fathers. So it was until the days of David, who found favor in the sight of God and asked leave to find a habitation for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and earth my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the Righteous One, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. The Stoning of Stephen Now when they heard these things they were enraged, and they ground their teeth against him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together upon him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. 
And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. From the Catechism Paragraph 3, The Mysteries of Christ's Life Concerning Christ's life the Creed speaks only about the mysteries of the Incarnation, Conception and Birth, and Pascal Mystery, Passion, Crucifixion, Death, Burial, Descent into Hell, Resurrection and Ascension. It says nothing explicitly about the mysteries of Jesus' hidden or public life, but the articles of faith concerning His Incarnation and Passover do shed light on the whole of His earthly life. All that Jesus did and taught, from the beginning until the day when He was taken up to heaven, is to be seen in the light of the mysteries of Christmas and Easter. According to circumstances catechesis will make use of all the richness of the mysteries of Jesus. Here it is enough merely to indicate some elements common to all the mysteries of Christ's life, in order then to sketch the principal mysteries of Jesus' hidden in public life. Christ's whole life is mystery. Many things about Jesus of interest to human curiosity do not figure in the Gospels. Almost nothing is said about his hidden life at Nazareth, and even a great part of his public life is not recounted. What is written in the Gospels was set down there so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Gospels were written by men who were among the first to have the faith and wanted to share it with others. Having known in faith who Jesus is, they could see and make others see the traces of his mystery in all his earthly life. From the swaddling clothes of his birth to the vinegar of his passion and the shroud of his resurrection, everything in Jesus' life was a sign of his mystery. His deeds, miracles and words all revealed that in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. His humanity appeared as sacrament, that is, the sign and instrument, of his divinity and of the salvation he brings, what was visible in his earthly life leads to the invisible mystery of his divine sonship and redemptive mission. Characteristics common to Jesus' mysteries Christ's whole earthly life, his words and deeds, his silences and sufferings, indeed his manner of being and speaking, is revelation of the Father. Jesus can say, whoever has seen me has seen the Father, and the Father can say, this is my Son, my Chosen, listen to Him. Because our Lord became man in order to do His Father's will, even the least characteristics of His mysteries manifest God's love. Among us. Christ's whole life is a mystery of redemption. Redemption comes to us above all through the blood of His cross, but this mystery is at work throughout Christ's entire life, already in His incarnation through which by becoming poor He enriches us with His poverty. In His hidden life which by His submission atones for our disobedience. In His word which purifies its hearers. In His healings and exorcisms by which He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. And in His resurrection by which He justifies us. Christ's whole life is a mystery of recapitulation. All Jesus did, said and suffered had for its aim restoring fallen man to his original vocation. When Christ became incarnate and was made man, he recapitulated in himself the long history of mankind and procured for us a shortcut to salvation, so that what we had lost in Adam, that is, being in the image and likeness of God, we might recover in Christ Jesus. For this reason Christ experienced all the stages of life, thereby giving communion with God to all men. 